Why don't we know who Faisal Sahib is? I think because he was just an ordinary kid who was stupid. I don't think he was an ideologue. He certainly wasn't the face of any propaganda. He was just a, a, a dumb kid at the local gym who fell in with the wrong crowd and uh, unfortunately um, ended up uh, paying for it with his life. I know it's just speculation at this point, but what could have appealed to him about that place, about the life that he was entering? I, I think a lot of people don't make the jump to becoming a terrorist or becoming an attacker um, in, in one great bound. The, the, the transition they make, somebody approaches them at the gym, at the club, whatever, shows them friendship, um, they respond to them. Maybe there's an absence of, of male leadership in their life, or maybe it's just, as any young kid, they're looking for friends. And it's the response to friendship in the first instance. So you want to be in with the crowd, you want somebody to, uh, to pay attention to what you're doing, um, and, and once you get that positive feedback, it's very hard to turn it down, or maybe you, you, know, you, you just want to believe, you suspend your disbelief, and it's more like, yeah, I'll go with these guys, hang out with them, they seem nice, and I'll go along to the meeting, and yes, okay, and eventually it's yes, I'll take the flight to Turkey, because it sounds pretty interesting, but um, by the time they've joined all the pieces together, it's too late to reverse their decision. Islam's version is that he told her he didn't want to be there, he wanted to escape too, and that he would do everything he could to help her escape. Is that a scenario that is believable in your view? It's certainly believable. It's a plausible scenario. What actually was going on in his head we won't know perhaps ever, and, and maybe he wasn't uh, you know, clear himself, likely very confused. It's believable that he was recruited without fully understanding what he was signing up to, dumb, stupid, irresponsible found himself on a flight to Turkey and a bus trip to Syria. We don't know much about his recruiters and that's perhaps more important because even if he was just a dumb kid who got into trouble and very tragically, somebody knowingly recruited him and, and that person quite likely is still active in Western Sydney and, and is recruiting others, including perhaps some kids who tried to go to Syria. So finding who the recruiters are, who has sway over them, um, what the networks are, that's critically important. How active was that area where Faisal Sahib was, you know, performing his kickboxing and, and hanging out around those? He was areas. from the Parramatta area of Western Sydney, that is the epicentre of, of the ISIS and to some extent the Al-Qaeda recruitment in recent years um, to jihadi terrorism. It, it's where the street da'wa group was operating before we knew how dangerous they were. People like Muhammad Ali Barale. Uh, there's many young Australians who ended up uh, going off to Syria some of them very knowingly, some of them sort of perhaps more naively. Um, it's linked with similar centres in, in Melbourne, uh, but it, it really is at the heart. Uh, but there are probably others involved that we, we don't fully know about. Because we're talking here of a network of some hundreds of people. And the Faisals, so far as we know his story, um, were sort of the, the, the nobodies who were picked up in that process. Um, it's the more instrumental recruiters that we need to be concerned about. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.